Our dad, John Newton Grayson, was born in Brooklyn, New York on September 4th, 1932 and transitioned June 25th, 2023. He was a significant presence in my life and in the lives of so many who had the opportunity to know him. The fourth of nine children, his parents, Leroy and Doris Grayson, emphasized discipline, hard work, and responsibility. Although his family didn't have a lot of money, their children didn't go without. Dad was able to receive a good education through high school and then decided to join the United States Army. He was honorably discharged as Sergeant First Class. Dad and my mother, Juanita, married young and took advantage of the opportunity to leave Brooklyn and move to Southern California. Dad had been stationed there while in the Army and the environment and weather appealed to them. At that time, I, as their firstborn, was a toddler and very much a daddy's girl. As it turned out, Dad ended up with four daughters and was very much a girl dad. Dad initially worked at Hughes Aerospace as an engineer during the day and studied for his BS degree in engineering in the evening. Those were lean years, but we made it through and Dad received a promotion and raise when he graduated. The year Susan, my first sister, was born, Dad received his BS in electrical engineering from Pacific State University. His career flourished in the aerospace industry, advancing to an executive level. Our sister April was born during this time. In 1969, our mother left this earth, leaving us devastated. Dad's example and spiritual leadership and our church community provided the support needed for us to survive this tragedy. I experienced God's presence, love, and comfort like never before. Dad remarried in 1970 and early in the 48 years that he was married to Dorothy Lane She became fully our mom, and her daughter, Teresa, became our sister. Also in 1970, with a longtime friend and colleague, Dad founded Univox California, Inc., which manufactured electronics equipment for the U.S. military. By 1974, Dad was the sole owner, and under his direction, Univox became a high-level technology company that manufactured a wide range of -of state-of-the-art electronic products. Confirmed as a child in the Episcopal Church, he later joined Westminster Presbyterian Church in Los Angeles with our mother and remained a member there for over 60 years. Dad served as a deacon, elder, and in many other capacities, including as a baritone and soloist in the church's sanctuary choir. He also served in the PCUSA locally and nationally as a moderator of the Senate of Southern California, serving two terms on the General Assembly Mission Council and board a trustee member of two denomination related institutions. San Francisco Theological Seminary, and Whitworth College. Dad had many more accomplishments throughout his distinguished career. As an example, he received a presidential appointment to serve as deputy director in the Department of Commerce, and in his later years was a successful consultant in the areas that included organizational development, 
strategic planning, and executive coaching. The most impressive thing about dad was his ability to be a very engaging parent. He always made family and his daughters a priority. If you phone called him, there weren't smartphones back then, and asked if he was busy, because he often was, his response was, not too busy for you. How that made us feel, like we were really the most important. He paid active attention to what was going on with us and was usually a few steps ahead. He was regularly present for dinner and homework each evening. Our parents were very connected to our lives and often to our dismay as teens, our habits and whereabouts. Dad encouraged the same with his seven grandchildren, but not so much with his growing number of great grands. He provided great counsel to us, our friends, associates, and youth at the church. Many people's career paths and our denomination were positively influenced by his wisdom, advice, and support. My own understanding of our polity and ethos has been influenced by him. That man could lecture nonstop for hours. Even though you could learn a lot, you also sometimes felt that your head would explode, especially after many hours. Interestingly enough, the older I got, the more I appreciated and valued long talks with dad. It probably wasn't easy being so brilliant, especially as a black man in this country. In 2018, mom sadly passed away before she and dad could realize their dream to move outside the country. By the time dad was close to 90, he was done with the U.S. and he realized his dream of moving and becoming an expat. Panama became the place where he and his third wife, Yvonne Day, chose to live happily until he became very ill and needed to return for necessary medical treatment. He wasn't able to travel back to Panama alive as planned yet his remains are there per his wishes. When I consider what is going on in this country right now, I think he was onto something. Some of the main values dad taught me included key business principles, the value of achievement, the saving grace of our Lord Jesus, the importance of family, and that love is a verb and is demonstrated through action. Most importantly, He often told us systems produce dominant outcomes. I strive to remember these principles. And even when I fall short, I'm reminded of God's grace and I'm truly grateful. Dear old dad, happy Father's Day with much love.